Previously in Fener. Luke chapter 13, verses 10. You all know the story. The woman had had an infirmity for 18 years. 18 years. And on the Sabbath day, Jesus comes to that woman and heals her. And the ruler of the synagogue gets a problem, indignated. That means he had a problem that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day. And Jesus is saying, now, if you can release animals to go and be watered on the Sabbath, how about the daughter of Abraham? Abraham is a representation of faith. In this instance, healing of the daughter of Abraham represented water. There is no freedom if a man is freed and then they're in the wilderness without access to water. Freedom begins with the understanding of the person of Jesus Christ. He is the ultimate freedom. If you be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and the heirs according to the promise. If you are Christ's, then are you Christ? A man under the law can't claim that scripture because he has not gone through these waters. When you understand faith and grace, oh, then are you Abraham's seed. Because now you're no longer under a schoolmaster, your trainer of childhood. You're under the spirit of grace, your trainer of maturity. No man who is functioning in the demonstration of the spirit ought to fight the spirit of grace or take the spirit of grace lightly. Because the Bible says the law is not of faith. To the degree of the inclination of your spirit to the law is to the degree of the death of faith in your spirit. You cannot say that I'm a believer but I'm under the law. There is never anywhere in the scriptures where God speaks of us balancing. No. He tells us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. There cannot be a place where grace can negotiate with sin. That's not grace. That's something like it. It's not it. By the time grace comes on your spirit as a regenerated creature, grace knows that you are born of an incorruptible seed. That is why the language there is, for the grace of God has been revealed, uh, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, has appeared, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly. Grace teaches, grace doesn't tell. Isaiah 43 for many people is a negative scripture. It has a negative connotation of the waters and the fire. He says, but now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he has formed thee, O Israel, fear not. He says, for I have redeemed thee. He's talking to a newborn again Christian. And I've called thee by name. And he says, thou art mine. He has owned you. And he says, and when thou, he didn't say if. He says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And he says, and when through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shall not be burned, and neither shall the flame kindle up thee. Now, when many people think about that, huh? they say, ah, yeah, fire, water. The landlord chases them out of the house. They say, I've been going through a fire. But because they've not understood the spirit of grace, they do not know what the waters are. For the regenerated Christian, ransomed and redeemed from the hand of whom was mightier than thee. When it comes to water and fire, it is an expectation. It's a when issue, not an if. And the John the Baptist says that I'm coming baptizing with water. But there's one which shall come and he shall baptize thee with fire. And they still don't get it. He says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. He says, see, next verse, he says, behold, I do a new thing. And he says, and now it shall spring forth, and shall ye not know it? He says, I will even make a way in the wilderness. Hallelujah. And rivers in the desert. These ones are not bad. They are for your advantage. Do you know what it means for you to have a river in a desert? When everybody's all drying out and dying, for you are all refreshed and full. Hallelujah. The water he's talking about in Isaiah 43 is for you and I. Hallelujah. It's for you and I to drink. He says, come to me, all you who thirst. And he says, and when you transition into the believing, he says, for as many as believed on him, the Bible says, out of them flow rivers of living water. The reason why God tells the church, be careful that we be not like those guys who fell in the wilderness, because the Bible says they fell in the wilderness. It was because when they were asking for water, they were asking for physical water. They were not asking for things spiritual. Paul comes to the church and he says, I'm come and to you that I might impart unto you some spiritual thing that in the end you will be established. The word there for spiritual thing is a gift, charismatos, the miraculous faculty. 
God just doesn't want to give you a miracle. No, he wants to give you that thing that creates miracles. God is raising a generation of people who are in the presence asking for something. Those days are coming where a man is going to be in the presence of God and he's saying, God anoint me for North America. Anoint me for South America. And then somebody says, and then another person is there saying, headache. Lord headache he says, come, 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 come. In the name of Jesus, let that head heal. Are you feeling healed? Yeah. Now God, leave us to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Uganda, Rabakosa, Shetelebaye, he is not a fool that he should lose what he cannot keep to keep what he can't lose. Tell your neighbor, it's about time to ask for crazy things. Hey! Run to the water! The true testimony of a man who is free they hunger for the word. It's okay to seek healing. It's okay to seek a word. It's okay to seek many things. But act like a free man. A man can sit on it and just listen to the word for one hour without moving. That is a free man. He says he's a discerner of hearts. He enters our thoughts, exposes them for what they really are. He cuts joint and marrow. And then he enters you. And then he knows, no, this, this is the problem you have. Yes, this one, maybe Apostle Grace didn't see it. Pastor so and so didn't see it, but the word of God sees it because the word of God has eyes. It searches, it cuts even beyond what we can see and seals you. If you have read the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you will realize that the men which took these guys into the fire got burnt. That's the thing about being born of God, being born of the Spirit. What burns people purifies you. The fourth man was too hot that he did at a certain degree of furnace to appear. Some of you, they are taking you into the fire and you don't know that's where Jesus is going to appear from. Oh! He will appear. That is why for us, our testimony is life. When we get to the place of the devil understanding you, it is past tense. He never understood you. He can't understand you. He will never understand you. He got stuck in the past. Yet the light which is shining in you is present, continuous. Scripturally, when your spirit is broken, there is no deliverance until the heart is made merry again. Because once you give attention to affliction, you'll attract evil every day. But it says, but he that is of a merry heart. <laughs> Woo! The Bible says he has a continual feast. He says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord where? Forever. And the Bible says, and it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, with the so ever the river shall come, shall live. That means everywhere you go, everything that is dead, you're the one who gives it life. Everywhere you go, you enter a company, it lives. You enter a business, it lives. You enter a ministry, it lives. You enter a marriage, it lives. Everything you do lives. If you come in Fanera and you're broke, welcome to money. If you come in Fanera and you're disadvantaged, welcome to advantage. If you've come to Fanera and you're weak minded, welcome to wisdom. Welcome to the anointing. Welcome to glory. Welcome to increase.